So you're telling me Microsoft just released a new AI tool that connects to a Microsoft Power BI data set and writes DAX? Isn't that kind of my job as a Power BI developer? Well, on the surface, it certainly looks like that's exactly what Microsoft just did. They just released the Power BI MCP server, which allows AI tools like LLMs to connect to a Power BI semantic model and make all kinds of changes. So is it any good? Well, in this video, I'm gonna be installing it and using it for the first time alongside you. You'll get my raw, unfiltered impressions and you'll get to see me struggle to install it, I'm sure. Uh, that said, before we jump into doing all that, if you could do me a favor, like this video and hit the subscribe button, it would mean a lot. We're on our way to 5,000 subs and I'd be happy to have you join me for that journey. All right, let's jump in the computer and let's get busy with AI. So in Microsoft's guide, they walk you through how to install it using Visual Studio Code, so that way you can use it with GitHub Copilot and Copilot Chat. Once you have Visual Studio Code open, all you would need to do is just search for Power BI Modeling MCP. But that is not what we're gonna do. We're gonna install it into Google's new anti-gravity development environment, mainly because I've been really liking using Gemini Pro 3. That said, if you just wanna see what this AI you know, thing from Microsoft can do before you bother to install it on your own personal computer, go ahead and use the video chapters down below in the video description to skip ahead. There's no reason that you should have to watch me ramble on about installing something that you just want to see a demo of first. So with that out of the way, let's jump into installing the MCP server into anti-gravity. And unfortunately, it's not just as simple as installing an extension in VS Code, which means that we're gonna have to follow these manual instructions right here. So I'm gonna download the Win32 64-bit version right here. And then once this opens up, I'm gonna go over here and I'm going to rename the end of this from VSIX to a ZIP. And I'm going to change it. Okay, now that I have this zip, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to unzip it by not right clicking. We'll just double click and go extract all. And then once we have it extracted, we're gonna go into extensions and we need to find the exe file. So I believe it's not there. SRC, no, I think it might be in server. And here it is in server power BI modeling mcp.exe. The next thing that I'm gonna to need to do is I'm gonna to need to open up anti-gravity, which is Google's IDE that I've installed. So here I am opening up anti-gravity. The agent will be loading because I've logged in. Um, and once it's logged in, I'm gonna click this three little dots right here and then click MCP servers, then click this button right here to manage MCP servers. And then I'm gonna search, click this uh, raw config. As you can see, I've already set up Microsoft's Fabrics MPC server. So let's go ahead and let's see if we can't uh, go ahead and set up Power BI's in the same way. So here I am in that zip file. I'm gonna go right here. And of course I have back, backslash escape characters. So I'm going to need to go here and then remove those backslash escape characters. Do, do, do. Do, 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 and hit enter. And here we have our Fabric MCP. Now I'm going to make a new folder right here, and I'm gonna call this Power BI MCP. And then I'm gonna go in here, and I'm going to copy everything out of that server or exe section into this folder right here. So now I have Power BI modeling.exp. I'm then gonna go back into my manual config right here. I'm going to create a new row. I'm going to add a comma right there. And then I'm going to title this instead of fabric PBI. And then on this command, because I must have deleted something, let me open, I deleted a, there we go. And then right here, Instead of this scratch right here, I'm going to get rid of this and I'm going to simply type the new folder, which was Power BI MCP. 
And then instead of that fabric exe, I'm going to go power bi dash modeling um, dash mcp exe. And I think that is correct. Um, dot exe. Did I spell that correctly? Um, not totally sure. So let's go right click this. Go rename, select the entire exe, and we will put this right there. So there we are, and let's hit save. So now that we've saved this, uh, Google Gemini should have access to Microsoft Power BI. So let's start by closing this and then reopening up anti-gravity, and let's see if it's installed. So here it is loading MCP servers. Do, 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 do. And one of the things I just realized I did was I didn't enter alter in the startup commands. So that's probably on me. So I'm going to scroll back down and I'm going to actually grab this piece right here. And let's quickly update that. So args environment. And so now there we go. We'll hit save and we're going to have to restart this. And as you can see, it failed to initialize, so let's exit out of that. And now let's open up anti-gravity. And now let's see if it succeeds. So loading MCP servers, refreshing, and there it is. Power BI is now fully loaded and operational. Okay, let's test it out. Now the MCP server has the ability to connect to a semantic model locally on my computer, one hosted in the Fabric service, or via a PIBP project folder. I'm going to try it with a very simple PBIX file. So I have this file open here called Beautiful Buttons. It's from my last video, and it's basically just some data that I inserted into a blank table. Let's try to connect to it. So I'm going to click that. I'm going to go Save As, Browse This Device, and I'm going to grab the Beautiful Buttons PBIX file name. And then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to minimize this. I'm then going to type connect to, and then in, in single quotes, beautiful buttons. And then I'll go in Power BI desktop. And let's see what it does. We're hoping for connect. And here we are. First, it's using the MCP server to connect. It found the host. It's connecting. And just like that, it's now connected. So we can now do all kinds of things. We can list measures, tables, and columns, create or modify DAX mod measures, query the model, update metadata, and much more. The first thing that I'm going to ask it to do, create a table for me to store my measures in. I want it to be titled measures which is a reserved keyword in Power BI. Avoid this by adding a non-zero or adding a zero width character that is not visible at the end of the table name. Let's see what it does. And as you can now see, here it is. It's, it's creating the table. It'll need to provide a DAX or M single row. Let me create it with a simple DAX expression. Oh boy, I think it did it. So um, let's see if that exists. So let's go back over here to Microsoft Power BI. And look, there it is, measures and value. And it, it wants me to create a measure. So I'll go, yes, put a measure in. Uh, call it placeholder. And let's see, there it is. It's creating a placeholder measure in the measures table. It's using the tool. And just like that, it did it. So let's go back. And Power BI wants us to refresh. So let's hit this refresh. And there we go. It's all set up. That's pretty cool. So let's try something a little bit more unique. Let's reconnect to that same Power BI desktop file. And then let's ask it to create a measure, but let's not actually call it a measure. So this will simulate, you know, a business user who doesn't know anything about Power BI 
trying to create a new measure in the report. So let's call it a calculation. So let's go create a calculation uh, called revenue that is 1,000 times 100. And let's see what it does here. Does it recognize that what I want to do is create a measure? So it's loading. And look here, it's creating a measure called revenue with that calculation, it even recognized calculation, even though I misspelled it. So let's go back into Microsoft Power BI desktop and let's see if it did that. So I'm going to go right here to revenue and look, it recognized that and created a, a revenue measure, even though I didn't call it a measure. So at this point, I'm not going to lie. I am pretty impressed, but I do have one final test. So let's, this file is called beautiful buttons. Let's see if it can create uh, SVG buttons for me in the Power BI file. So I'm going to type a prompt here. I'm going to add, uh, ask it to create three SVG image URL uh, measures that represent a, a material UI style button in a normal state, a hovered state, and a pressed state and then put them in a folder called SVG button in the measures table. And let's see what it does. And after just a few seconds, it says it's created the measures. So let's go take a look at what it actually did. So I'm going to expand this. And as you can see, it did create a folder here called SVG buttons. So one of the things I noticed is that it didn't categorize them as an image. So that's a little bit of a flaw, but let's categorize these as an image here. So image URL, and then let's go ahead and let's add the new image visual here. And let's see if what it created will actually render. So let's go down here. Let's go to style image. Then let's change this to select from data and let's drag over the first one. And let's see, did it create a button? It does not look like it necessarily did here. So let's go back into um, anti-gravity here and let's say these are not rendering and they are not categorized as image URLs. Fix this and let's see if it will go ahead and fix this. Here it is. It says I need to fix the issues. Let me update all three measures. Um, it's thinking. It's working. It's using the MCPs tool. Is it going to be working? Let's see. It says it changed some things. Look, it did. Oh, wow. OK. All right. I honestly did not think that this was was going to work. Um, yeah, let's, let's go ahead. So we now have an all let's change this to the hover. So it generated in a hover. Okay. And then let's go ahead and put in a pressed. Okay. Wow. That is honestly pretty impressive. So is this going to take my job away as an experienced Power BI developer? In my opinion, the short answer is no, because you still have to know a fair amount about Power BI in order to use it effectively. But I do think that it's going to reduce the need for someone like a junior BI analyst, because I'll be able to do it any of the kinds of things that I might ask a junior BI analyst to do in seconds using this LLM. So I, I do think there is a little bit of job risk there. Uh, that said, this is a fantastic tool. And if your company has a corporate approved LLM that's capable of uh, connecting to MCP servers, I would say go ahead and install this because some of what it's doing here is next level. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, again, please subscribe and hit the like button. And with that, thanks for watching.